Hey everyone, I decided that I was going to use this sheet load of cards for December 2021 again. I'm going to use my standard card bases, which are A2, so five and a half by four and a quarter. And then I have some craft panels that I'm going to use as my backing sheets for this paper pad. Uh, these are four by five and a quarter. I just chopped these myself on my Tim Holtz uh, trimmer. This milk and cookies paper pad I used for uh, Kendra's card challenge number three. I'll put a link to that in the top right corner. That's when I started using this paper pad. I think I used six sheets. Uh, but I'm keen to not have partial paper pads around in my craft space. So I thought rather than following the exact design of, of this uh, card sketch, which requires you to use three pattern papers, I'm just going to use the dimensions and the basic layout of this design and I'm going to create what I can. I have no idea how many cards we'll be able to make. I'm just going to plan them out and then I'm going to do my standard craft background and then I'm going to do my standard white mats and we will see how we go. For the patterned papers themselves, I need to remind myself, this is three by three and 3.75 by two. If I pull all of these pages out, I'll be able to get a better feel for what I have left. Traditionally, I struggle with doodabug paper pads because I love both sides of the paper. <laughs> So I could never quite figure out what to keep and what to and what to not use. Uh, I will be creating Christmas cards given the style of the paper pad. Milk and cookies is cute, but I do like I do like the snowflakes. Oh, this one's a little tricky. I'm not a giant fan of pink, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say, look, this one has some Merry Christmas on it. That might be helpful in terms of sentiments. Three by three, so I now have three in that pile and four in the other pile. Now, it's gonna be a matter of working out how many I, I can create, but just looking at these two, the, the Santas and the Gingerbread Man are so, so cute. They're literally my favorite in the whole paper pad. So I think the best way to showcase these is to actually make them this focal point here because I'm not planning on have such a large sentiment uh, it won't really cover up so much so I think we'll have the gingerbread man and the Santas they're going to look super cute so if I chop this I think what I've ended up with is 24 cards, a couple of them with a shorter strip here. I'm going to mat them all, figure out sentiments, and then compile all the cards together. I'll, as, as I normally do, pop it to some music. Uh, I will put a link below to the sheet load of cards instructions from Call Me Craft Yell. As a reminder, whenever I mat my pattern paper, I use just uh, heavyweight cheap card stock. So this copy paper is 80 GSM in Australia and this is 140 GSM so it's not quite double the strength but it just gives it a little bit of weight uh, and I generally attach as many pieces as I can onto one sheet and then I chop them all down together I don't try and chop the mats and then attach the pattern paper to this instead I just attach it with the right size border whatever border I feel like a small medium or large I try and be consistent across the cards and then I chop them all up move them around and create the cards.
I've created all of my panels. I have these 24 as my sentiments, 24 like this, 24 like this. I'm gonna attach them all to my back panels and then attach all the back panels to the cards in one go. I find that if I do it mass production style, I just get through it way quicker. So I'll just cover my desk in these panels. I'll attach all of them to the cards. And then once I've done that, I'll then go through and try and match up the three by threes. When you're doing things mass production style, I just highly recommend using up what you have. So this would actually work just fine if you are using a liquid glue or a double-sided tape. I use my ATG because it's faster. So because it's really super quick, I find I can knock through the cards pretty quickly. Sometimes I will sit in front of the TV with panels like this and put strips of double-sided tape on the back. And then if that's the case, then when I'm creating this project, I just need to peel off the backing strips and use those. Also, if you've got some old smaller tape runners or just, just things in your stash that you wanna use up, when you're mass producing cards, it's a great time. This part here, literally just need to pop these straight in the corner. And then the three by three is gonna be from the same amount of border thrown in the top corner. I will actually end up putting some extra paper in here so that the cards don't end up with a giant dip in it. So that ends up being a little fiddly, uh, but I do have a bunch of spare cardstock instead of using like foam tape. I think there's quite a few card makers that, that do that instead of using foam tape. That's one giant pile. We'll just do these left over here. There's not too many to go. This is 24 panels. I'm gonna do these in bundles. What I might do is have a few of these ready to go. And I get to see my little stash of spare paper here. And this is where I'll bring in the liquid glue. So we'll definitely end up needing to add a secondary layer here. Otherwise what happens is the paper ends up with a massive dip and the card looks terrible. So this way, it layers on top. So whatever stash that I have here can be used to solve for this. Really, I love this. This means that I'm just not wasting the leftovers. And you don't have to be particularly perfect with it. It's really just gonna help out to make sure that you don't have that giant dip. They have four of these panels ready to go and I might actually just use the liquid glue and because I have four on my table at once, when I have these three by three, I can just decide which one it looks best on. And then I can put the Santas with the stripe, which also looks pretty cool. So we have four panels. And then because we're going to use these for the Merry Christmas, I really liked the idea that I would be finishing all the cards and using all the pattern paper, but I am fully prepared to pivot if I think that that does not look like a cool sen sentiment. So I guess the question is, would these look better with a Merry Christmas instead? For example, would I prefer these cards like this? And I have to say, yes, I do. And I don't think that these necessarily need matting on them either. I don't think I need to do another layer, but I think that that looks better than this. So I'm gonna pivot. I have new sentiments and a new approach. And then I think the other thing to consider is, does this look, does this really need the paper to pop it up? I'm gonna try one without, let's just see, cause this will make things quicker. If you're doing a design that has lots and lots of different pieces of paper, then I definitely prefer to put some cardstock behind so that it's propped up. I'm not really noticing too much difference, but I definitely prefer the Merry Christmas sentiment on it rather than this Merry Christmas decoration. And I think it's because this just looks like a random piece of pattern paper. It doesn't really look like a sentiment. It's not really jumping out to me as though it, it's there for a purpose. It just looks like a pretty collage of paper. Definitely gonna go with these and I'm gonna end up with four of these ones. So I will complete the cards and check back in at the end.
created 28 cards, 24 using the Call Me Crafty Old December 2021 template. I've then created a four bonus cards to finish off the Milk and Cookies paper pad. Now they all look like they go together because I've used this standard format. So the craft background, the white card base, and then the same colors and tones with the pattern paper. If you're interested in more sheet load of card videos, I'll put a link right here. Have a great day.